Greetings, 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 young cadets of Top Gun Maverick. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, I'm talking to the Kingdom Sons. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, we were uh, here at the house watching a movie called Top Gun Maverick, and uh, it was uh, very powerful, just this one scene that Tom Cruise was watching, and if some of you are uh, watching for the first time, I want to thank you and welcome you to H2HDI, and if some of you guys are watching, Wait, isn't this a ministry channel? Yes, it's a ministry, but yet we're actually ministering to those who are initiated from the sacred secrets. That is the realm in Greek called Mysterion, or in Hebrew we call it Raz, meaning you're initiated from the sacred secrets. That's why you can hear things in the scriptures, and yet it is still unveiled unto you when you begin to research a matter for it to be so. But the reason why I'm saying Top Gun Maverick is because we here at the house uh, spent some quality time uh, watching this movie. And we said, oh, it's a new movie. Let's watch it. But we were so inspired by this one thing that this one uh, scene Tom Cruise entered and he said there is a new uh, plane on display and it's uh, about to break into the Mach 10 system. And what's funny is that when you begin to ascend, your enemies are going to start mocking you. But yet the father is still saying, nope, you're ascending higher in me. Therefore, I will mock the enemy on your behalf. So if you want to rule and reign, you got to restore his name. But remember, every time you ascend higher, there will always be an obstacle in the way. But it's in the way for you not to, <laughs> not to stumble. But it's for you to rumble on and to press in and press on into the next realm of who Yahuwah is. And now this funny thing is, uh, as we were continue, as I was reading the word honor, I was intrigued by uh, the twofold word of honor. In Greek, there's two words in Greek, and I'm going to take you there right now. The first one is two thousand Greek G lexicon 2008, which is epitimai. If I, I'm saying this wrong, please excuse me. We're just going to dive right into it. It means to honor, to meet out, do measure, to censure. In uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 21, there is, speaks about right there the charge. So did you know that when you are given honor, you are given a charge? Did you know that? Well, if you didn't, it's right there in the lexicon. And I'm going to give you scripture. Go to Luke chapter 9, verse 21. And this was speaking to me. I'm giving you a two-fold Greek. It's going to be two Greek words and two Hebrew words. And you'll see both, it's uh, the same thing, a marismos, a two-edged sword, Hebrews 4.12. Don't turn there, but if you understand where I'm heading and you understand where H2HDI is going, we're ascending into the word honor. And then we'll go into the book of uh, 2 uh, Timothy chapter 2, verse 20, where it speaks about vessels of honor and dishonor. But let me tell, help you to understand where we are at in Greek to Hebrew in one aspect, and then we'll go again into a different aspect of what uh, honor is both in Greek and in Hebrew. So the first one is charge, Luke chapter 9, verse 21, and it says right here, this is Yeshua sending out the two in honor, because remember, you got to be a vessel of honor, and you got to be a steward over your brother. You're, uh, how do we say it here? You're, uh, you're your brother's keepers here because there is a high honor and value of what the Father is uh, giving you. So therefore, you can be partake into the next generation of sons that are willing to bear the weight, the kabad of Yahuwah, his name on, his, on your shoulders. Amen. So let's, let me turn there. Luke chapter 9, verse 21. But, uh, it says, Yeshua predicts his death and resurrection. The thing about the New King James... They always have these titles here, but if you really understand what the Father's saying, he's, he's, uh, he tells you a whole different aspect of what one scripture could say. Uh, verse 21, And he strictly warned th and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, Son of man, The Son of Man, Yeshua, must suffer these things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. So that's a part of honor. What do you, what do you mean honor? We got to suffer these things? Well, yes. Don't you have to suffer for his name's sake? You are a partaker of 
of, uh, of his suffering. I know we don't want to hear that, but it's a truth. In Christianity, they teach you, oh, you don't have to suffer anymore. Jesus did it at the cross 2,000 years ago. Yes, but in order to become the Word made flesh, you have to go through process. You have to go through the affliction. Come on, you got to go through the, the uh, rejections. It says so right here what a son has to do. And I'm not saying you are the son of man. I'm saying in order to qualify yourself and see yourself as Yeshua, like him, a simile, be like him. You actually understand uh, the son of man must suffer many things. I've suffered rejection from my elders, from people I look up to. I've suffered from those who I went to the uh, before meeting Apostle Robert Gonzalez, the scribes, because I said, excuse me, I would like to subscribe to your ministry if you can help to mentor me, guide me. He's like, yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. go uh, buy my books and uh, you know, we'll go from there. And I was just 19, 20, 21 at the time. And they tell me, see, I was, I went through these things and be killed. Yes, I have been killed. A lot of uh, family relatives have been trying to kill the seed engrafted in me, but they can't because the father says, no, 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 no. You're my son and I'm going to groom you. So therefore you may learn how to enter your tomb, which will then become your womb. Amen. And then going into Hebrew, and the second word is 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse uh, 2. And this is the word rebuke. So in honor, there is a charge and a rebuke. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. And I was on 2. And it says, let's start in verse 1. I charge you. Oh, there it is again. You therefore before Yahuwah and Yeshua, Master Yeshua HaMashiach, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdoms, his kingdom, one kingdom. Preach the word, be ready in and out of season, convince, rebuke, there's the word honor right there, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. There it is right there. A part of honor is to rebuke. And I have been rebuked here at the house uh, you see me on uh, on live streams before that I have been rebuked, I have been corrected. That is a part of the process in order to become the Word made flesh. Does Apostle Robert Gonzalez like doing it? No, but the Father, Yahuwah in him, must do it in order for me to bear the weight of having honor. Because if I, mean, I don't want to enter into the kingdom of the Father and he says, Oh, you, you're a vessel of dishonor rather of honor. Why didn't you bear my name at this appointment? appropriate time and I know and I understand it's a it's a tough thing to go through but now going into Hebrew Hebrew 1605 Gawar Gawar excuse me if I'm saying this wrong this is the way I wrote it out so bear with me it means to rebuke be reproof and corrupt did you know that so if you go to Psalms uh uh, chapter 9 verse 5 it says re he rebukes the enemy on your behalf and what's funny was that as I was looking into this word right here the father was showing me he says it's interesting how in the book of Genesis I rebuked the one generation one time but then in the middle when it goes into Psalms and in the Proverbs and in the, uh, the book of Zechariah he actually had to rebuke the enemy who was coming in intertwining on our behalf the genealogy of righteousness and then the gene and the promise seed and then a generation of corruptness and then if you go all the way to malachi you actually see he had to rebuke us the generation because we allowed twisted teachings to come in Je and then we have the scripture jeremiah 16 19 that's why the father doesn't want to rebuke it but he wants to see the honor now that's one side of the sword of honor the second side of it Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20, which is, uh, oh, the oh, I'm sorry, 1 Timothy, what am I doing? Uh, excuse me, I think I wrote the words wrong. Uh, no, it's right here, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. It says, let's start in uh, verse 19. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of Yahuwah stands, having this seal, Yahuwah knows who are his and let everyone whose name the name of Mashiach depart from iniquity that's why we got to repent because some of us have been brought up 
And it's not your fault because we didn't know. We believed the doctrines that we received, such as being Pentecostal, that we thought was a doctrine, but really is a festival in Leviticus 23. We thought, and we have, and we put it to practice saying, the time of Pentecost is here. Jubilee is here. How many times, how many years, oh my God, I've been to one church one time in my life and every year was Jubilee, 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 around the same time, June, July. But I asked the father, is this really Jubilee? Because if Jubilee says once every 50 years, who was he speaking to in that particular time and season? There's in Greek, Kronos, Kairos, and then in Hebrew, Moedim. Times, meaning the Kronos, the time that we see on the watch right now, it could be eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 in the morning, 10 midnight. Then we have Kairos, which is a spiritual time where we're searching the Father. And then there's the appointed time uh, in the Moedim. That is the time and seasons of the Father that we see as servant sons in Leviticus 23 that we operate into. And, and there it is again. The Hebrew, the Greek word right there for, uh, for a price and a value of honor is time. G5092. And let me get to the scripture. And I don't know why I just went there. It was funny. I was just talking about time and the word right there for honor is spelled time. Can you believe that? But it's pronounced T-E-M-A-Y. T -E -E and it's a valuing a price. So let me read on. It says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay some for honor and some for dishonor and right there that uh word right there in he in greek excuse me is g5092 teammate meaning there's a value a price when you begin to honor yourself in the kingdom when you begin to see yourself and identify yourself as a son as a son listen to what i'm saying as a son not the son don't get it twisted. We all have our own identity. Don't try to uh, corrupt yourself into thinking you are the begotten son. Stop right there. Repent and say, Father, I am not the begotten son. I am a servant son trying to conform my, li my life, my identity hidden back in Mashiach Yeshua, your son, who is teaching me how to become a servant son to you first, first and foremost. It's not an easy task because there's part of the soul as a young man, I'm speaking for myself, that wants to, is like a donkey that's bucking that when the weight comes, it wants to buck and take off the weight off of, uh, of walking out, whatever the weight of glory, whatever the weight of esteem is. I'm speaking for myself in that arena because I've gone through that and I'm still putting my soul into that furnace of refinement. So therefore I'm in alignment with the scriptures and with what the father is saying. And right there, if you go to Hebrews and then changing it from Greek to Hebrew, it means uh, 7613, H7613. 7613, and just to let you know, I'll put on the lower thirds for you. It is Seath, S-E-H-A-Y-T-H. -E and, and it means elevation, exaltation, dignity, swelling, uprising. It is a standard of measure. So when you begin to honor the Father, and you know, I'm not saying like even with, uh, if you watch the terabyte before this, I recommend you do it. I'm just showing you the clarity of what uh, honor is, the function of honor. These are words both in Greek and Hebrew, how it has a twofold meaning, both two words in Greek, which is two, G2008 epitimeo, uh, and then G Hebrew, excuse me, 1605 gowar, and then the other one in, in Greek is, for honor is 5092 teammate. And then I, the one I just read right now, which is 7613, which is C Aith. And it means a standard, a measure. And the scripture right there uh, is in Genesis 49, verse 3. And we're going back to the beginning of not the basics of, this, of what we're coming into, but we're coming into the basics and the fundamentals of how to carry yourself, how to carry the mantle within you that was laid on you, by, not by the laying of the hands of the presbytery, but by the impartation, by a relationship with your father with your heavenly father i'm walking into that realm as we speak because until the time appointed 
is to come, therefore a son will be sent from the house. Genesis chapter 49, verse 3. I'm trying to turn there right now. And it says, Reuben, you are my firstborn. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm going to end it right here. Excuse me. It says, Reuben. Oh, so the son of promise, the first son. You are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength. So the firstborn is always the uh, one with the might, the beginning of my strength, the father's strength. And he said, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. And then you actually begin to see the twofold that I told you. There's honors, vessels for honor, and then vessels for dishonor right there in the scripture in 2 Timothy 2.20. And this is the other part of him, the suke realm that we were discussing uh, several months ago and several weeks ago and even the past uh, in tune. He says, unstable as water, you shall not excel because you went up into your father's bed, then you defiled it. He went up to my couch. And that's tough. Because right there, the word right there for honor is dignity. Right there in the scriptures. Let me read it again. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, the excellency of honor. And there it is right there, a standard of measure, a standard of ruling. That's why he was mentioned right there as the firstborn. My might, the beginning of strength, of my strength. There it is. I can see the tabernacle right there. If you slow it down, there's outer court, might, holy court, beginning, and then the holy of holies, strength. And when you begin to see these things, you're going to learn what it means to be a vessel of honor and uh, see the opposite side and be a vessel of dishonor. And we all have that. We all have that in the, our, our own life because you got to understand in every single aspect of who we are, we both have a vessel of honor and a vessel of dishonor. Again, there it goes again, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. We begin to see, and I'm going to finish it right there. Because this is something that's speaking to me. But in a great house, you are that house that he's speaking to. You are that great house. And he says, there are not only vessels of gold and silver. Oh, gold speaks of the Father's nature. And then silver speaks of redemption. But also of wood, meaning your humanity, clay, and some for honor and some for dishonor. So there we have it right there. That is where we are headed right now to receive the mantle of the Father and to walk out the honor to where and learn to give when honor is due, not only to the man of the house, which is the spirit, your spirit, the Father's spirit in you. Therefore, you walk out in his honor and there's a greater weight because when honor comes, then Ahava, the love of the Father, is then able to manifest. So until we see each other again, just want to thank you, welcome you, research all these uh, words that I've given you out, watch this another um, a couple of more times, write down these lexicon words, the two of them in Greek and the two of them in Hebrew, and you're going to be uh, beginning to see where we are headed in this era because with this new change of time, we're coming into a new era. H2HDI is entering into a new era. It's entering into a new unveiling, a new unfolding of who the Father is within you and I this day. So until we see each other again, don't forget to hit the like, the share, the comment button, subscribe to H2HDI for more content to come. We have content such as Let Isha Speak, hosted by Prophet Virginia Gonzalez. We have uh, In Tune with the Triune, obviously hosted by me. And then we also have our Terabytes, hosted by Apostle Robert Gonzalez, who teaches you how to become a threat, a terror, and a revenger to the kingdom of darkness. So until we see you, oh, and don't forget we have our Sabbath live stream from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. every Saturday. It's there to encourage, and like I said, we're coming into a new era by what uh, <laughs> Isha has said when we were uh, off, off, uh, off camera, off live, I think. Off live, off camera? Anyways, you guys understand what I'm saying. When we begin to break bread with uh, one with another, there's just a lot of hidden mysteries that are beginning to be unveiled within the household this day so don't forget to again hit the subscribe button and come back 
for more content to come. So until we see each other again, just want to say this, Bakr Tov, Lila Tov, Shabbat Shalom, whatever time frame you're watching this, have a good day. Shalom.